Okay, so dispersion is when something, when an object splits light into its individual wavelengths. Because, and this is the important part, why, the, why does it happen in the first place? Well, the reason is, is the index of refraction is not constant. Even though we've been saying it's constant up to this point, the index is actually not constant. It's dependent on the wavelength. So depending on what the wavelength is, the index of refraction will change. So let's just write that. The index of refraction depends on the wavelength. So one of the things of the table in the book, yeah, question? So for white light, does it contain all the wavelengths in the electromagnetic spectrum or just the visible light that we can see? Um, so it depends on the light source. So um, these lights here, which we'll learn, fluorescent lights, which we'll learn a little bit later, really only contain four wavelengths. They don't even contain all of them. But um, incandescent lights, it's a broad range. Uh, the sun is an even broader range of wavelengths. The sun pretty much contains just about all of them. Um, so one of the things you probably glossed over in this little table when it was giving you all the indices of refraction was it says measured with light of vacuum wavelength 589 nanometers. Whoa, they made a mistake here, didn't they? MN. What is MN? Meters and nanos. Okay. It's like you know, the Spanish version. So <laughs> <laughs> nanometers is what it should be. So this is a very specific wavelength. Now if you look at different wavelengths, so there's another chart in your book. Okay, this one right here. So depending on what the color is, what the wavelength is, the index of refraction is different. It's going to change. So for example, violet for crown black, glass, violet is about 1.53. And for red, it's about 1.51. So it's changing. So what does this mean if the index of refraction is changing? OK, different colors are going to refract at different angles, exactly. So let's go back to our prism up here. I'm going to have you do this one more time now that you guys are wizards. So let's say this is 1.42. Let's say that's for red. What if N for violet? So if you have a purple, if you don't have purple, maybe you could use blue. Let's say for violet, it's 1.47. Okay? N equals, yeah. N for violet equals 1.47. So imagine I'm going to take a red laser and a purple laser, violet laser, and I'm going to send them together so that I have my red laser right on top of my purple laser. I'm going to send them both in at the same time. And what I want you to do is find the angles, find the exit ang angle for the violet. Okay? If you can predict the path of the violet, if you're not quite sure, calculate the angle and then go ahead and draw it in.
So in our results, what's happening? We came in at the same time. Notice here that it only bent a little bit more. It's not even a full degree, right? But what happened by the time we made it to the end? It's like five, six, like six degrees, right? So we only changed a little bit here, and then by the end, there's a six degree difference here, seven degree difference almost, right? So we have now have the splittage, right? Or this where it splits from red to violet. Okay? So that's how the rainbow works, the rainbow effect. Now what if we did green? Where do you think the index is going to be live for green? Somewhere in between, right? So maybe it's like 1.45 or something. So how should I draw my green beam? In between. Right in between. <laughs> Okay, and how should I draw my yellow? Right in between. Yes. So is the ones that you've been telling us for like water, is that like the middle? Yeah, the one for water, whatever that table said, it was it's usually yellow is what they use. 489 is what they used in that table. That's kind of the standard. So that was for the yellow color. So it's going to be slightly different for each. Yeah, they kind of do it like right there close to the middle. All right, so this is the rainbow. Um, now this happens all the time. Anytime light goes through these substances, it's going to start to split it. However, notice that most of the time it's so small that your eyes don't recognize that change. But when you put it through something like a prism, you get a much more, on the second boundary, you get a much more dramatic change. And now your eyes can see it and see the differences here. Notice what color's on top? Red. What color's at the bottom? Okay, violet. That's because which one bends more? Violet. So where else do you see this effect in daily life? Where else do you see rainbows in daily life? Okay, so how about rainbows? Okay, so what do you need for rainbows? Okay, so you need like a raindrop. And what does a raindrop kind of look like? Okay, a, <laughs> a circular prism, right? Like a, ra a rounded prism, yeah? Um, you don't just get rainbows when it rains. What else do you need? You need light, yeah. So you need to have light as well. So if you notice when rainbows happen is when there's rain and then there's like an opening in the clouds somewhere. And so typically you'll see rain somewhere far away and then it'll be uh, cleared up in another region, that's when you should expect to see rainbows, is when you have rain plus uh, cleared up sky. Yeah? What about like if you see gasoline on the ground and it's like rainbowy? Uh, we're going to talk about that in a future unit, but um, it's a slightly different effect when you see something like oil on the ground or bubbles. Like when you see bubbles, you see rainbow and bubbles. So we are going to go over that, but um, it has to do with a different effect. Okay? All right, so...